Good afternoon. Welcome uh, to City Field. Thank you all for coming today, and welcome to all those audiences watching uh, our, uh, our announcement uh, live on all the different social channels. Um, we'll go over the, uh, the agenda rules following uh, today's uh, announcement and, uh, and talks. Uh, with that, we'll begin with Mets General Manager Brody Van Wagnen. Thank you, Harold. So here we are. <laughs> uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, this is an important day on, on many levels. Um, we're welcoming officially Jed Lowry to the New York Mets family. Uh, Mylesa, his wife, is here today. We want to welcome you to the organization. His agent, Casey Close, is here. Casey, thanks for everything you've done in this, in this process. Uh, as many of you have heard over the course of this offseason, we have had some very specific agenda items that we wanted to address as we went out to, to build this roster. Uh, offensively, specifically, we have talked about increasing our run production, We've talked about adding depth to our lineup, creating versatility, and creating balance on both sides of the plate, particularly from the right side. Needless to say, Jed is one of those rare players that checks all of those boxes. He's even more of a rarity when it comes to decision making because our entire front office was on the same page in wanting to bring this player aboard. You know, from our leadership team starting with Jeff, to Omar and Allard and Jared and Adam and Ian and David Wright and Ruben Amaro, the entire, the entire group, John Rico, the entire group from the beginning said this is the perfect player for this roster at this, at this time. Um, and as, as a result, we targeted Jed early. We reached out to Casey in November and we stayed in close contact with each other throughout the course of the off season. As this roster came together, we never quit on trying to, make, uh, trying to make this relationship happen. And I think as we look, uh, look forward in terms of how we got to this point from those first conversations, we knew that all-star players like Jed have lots of suitors when they get into free agency on the heels of two consecutive seasons in which Jed performed as well as he, as well as he had. Uh, but over the course of the discussions, we are really, really fortunate and thrilled that Jed bought what we were selling <laughs> and, and, uh, and that he chose us in this environment where he gets a chance to make a choice on where he wanted to play and he believes in what we're trying to accomplish here, here in Flushing. I think as we now look at him as a person, separate from the player with all of his on-field talents, I think we're gonna, you're going to find a guy whose work ethic, his preparation, his dis discipline, and his professionalism will be infectious to everybody that we have on our roster, especially the young players. As far as fitting into our clubhouse, I think Jed is also in a unique situation that he has many pre-existing relationships within our team and within our, within our coaching staff. Jed played in Oakland over the last couple of seasons. Um, he was in Oakland earlier in his career as well. He had a couple stints in, in Oakland. But during those years, he had a chance to play with Ioannis Cespedes. He had a chance to work with our now new current hitting coach, Chili Davis. And I think he built a rapport with both of those people, and both of those guys are really excited to have him here. And I have no doubt that the camaraderie that they shared in Oakland will carry over here to New York. Another point of connectivity is Jed and Todd Frazier. I think everybody in this room knows that Todd is a character of all characters. Uh, Jed and Todd used to train together in the off season back when they were in their younger days uh, at, at an academy down in Florida. They used to, uh, used to work, out, work out together. Uh, they've both grown up a lot since then. They've both, <laughs> well, Jed has. Uh, they both have accomplished great things in the game, and I, uh, and I look forward to hearing the good nature banter that will continue between, uh, between these, two, these two guys. Uh, you know, I also, you know, it's worth noting that Jed and Gary DeSarcina both had common roots in the Boston Red Sox organization. When Jed, after he was drafted in the first round in 2005, Gary DeSarcina was the infield coordinator as Jed was coming up through the minor leagues. And, you know, I think that there was one comment that Gary made to Jed you know, early in his career when he pointed out that, that Jed's versatility would be the ingredient of his, of his talent tool set that would get him to the big leagues. But it was going to be his bat that kept him there. And now as, as we sit here more than 10 years later, I think it's ironic that Jed fits our team perfectly for the combination of those two things. His defensive versatility, his ability to hit, 
and his ability to produce with the offensive prowess that's going to make him a key ingredient to our lineup as we, as we try to build this championship. As some of you also know, Jed and I have had a personal history. You know, I've known him since 20 year, when he was 20 years old, I mm -hmm. think, in 2004. Uh, and funny enough, Casey, his agent, and I actually met Jed together back in 2004 at a restaurant in Palo Alto. Uh, I don't think any of us could have predicted that we'd be sitting here in this, in this moment and this time um, for each of, our, each of our current roles and at this moment in the franchise's, uh, franchise's history. But, uh, but both of you guys, thank you so much for your efforts and your constant communication to give us a chance for this to happen. And so I think uh, to bring this to an official stance, Without further ado, Jedi, welcome to the Mets, <laughs> and uh, may the Force be with us all. <laughs> Thank you. Want to do the hat first? No, let's just let's do the picture with this, and I'll put the hat on with the jersey. Yeah, sounds good. Real quick, a photo. Did everybody get it okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Jed, we'll let you make a few uh, remarks okay. before we take some questions. Yeah. Uh, first off, I want to thank the Wilpon family for the opportunity, Jeff, um, the entire Mets organization, Brody. Um, like you said, didn't think we'd be sitting in this position uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife, my Lessa, my kids back home, and uh, the rest of my family. Uh, it's just a, a really cool opportunity. I'm excited to be here and, and to be a Met. Good. Thank you, Jed. Um, remem remember to state your name and your affiliation so that uh, the audiences will understand who the question's coming from. And with that, uh, we'll begin with uh, Andy. Andy Martino, SMY. Brody, you've added, obviously, a number of all-star caliber players this offseason, very aggressive offseason. Do you think with Jed's acquisition here, you've done the bulk of your work in assembling the team that will report to spring training? Well, we're really excited with what we've done so far. You know, I, I don't think that we ever want to limit our options or assume that we have all of the answers at this point. But with the players we added, and obviously with Jed being another significant investment for the organization, I think we continue to feel really, really good about the team that we've created and our ability to contend, our ability to win. And if, uh, if other opportunities present themselves down the road, we'll be, we'll be open to them. But I think we feel really good about what we have right now. And Jed, you, Brody said that, that you bought the vision that he was selling. Uh, what did he sell to you, and why did you choose the Mets over what I'm sure were other options? Well, I, I think you know actions speak louder than words. And um, just like you said, he's, it's been an aggressive offseason here. And um, you know, I, I think a lot of the moves that led up to, to us you know, kind of rekindling uh, in the new year uh, helped make this decision easier. In the far back. Bill Atson, MLB.com. Jed, congratulations. I'd like Thank to you. know, um, you being reunited with Chili Davis. Yeah. I'd like to know, was, how good is it to be reunited with him, and mm -hmm. what's the biggest thing you learned from him? Uh, I, I think it's just the Chili, – Chili's one of those guys that had a very fantastic career, um, very accomplished hitter, and still to this day understands uh, how hard it is and what it takes to go into uh, preparing to do that every single day. And so I think uh, his perspective on that and, and what it takes to be ready to produce every single day, um, I, I can't say you know one thing specifically. It's just it's the overall approach, and, that, and that's what it takes to be successful in, in baseball when you play such a long season. Ron on the left. 
Hey Brody, where do you envision Jed fitting in in the infield rotation? And Jed, assuming you're going to move around a bit, how is that different from the last three years when you've been pretty much a second baseman? I'll start. Yep. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think I talked about it earlier. I think versatility is something that we have really wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, wanted to create with this with this roster. Um, we also have a veteran club. We've got, uh, you know, Jed. He's a big wine connoisseur, so he gets, he gets better with age, like many of the wines that he collects. Uh, but we have a veteran club, and we want to make sure that we're not overtaxing the players that we have. We don't want to feel like anybody has the need to play 162 games, but if we can manage the workload to get the maximum performance out of each guy, there's more than enough playing, to, playing time to go around. The way we would see it is that you know, Jed would have the ability to play second base, he would have the ability to play third base, and he would be able to play shortstop. I envision him being able to do all three on a semi-regular basis in terms of which position it is, but he's going to be in our lineup virtually every day. He, he's going to hit in the top of the order. His switch hitting ability, hitting in front of Cano and after Nimmo potentially as we configure, start to configure the lineup, I think is something that's really attractive. And, and lastly, before, before I turn it over to Jed, is that we've talked a lot about this offseason, making sure that we are covered in the event that the inevitable adversity happens to our club. And I think what we've tried to create here is that when that adversity comes, and even when the days off come, is that we don't have a second line of defense. Defense. We have all-star players all around the diamond that can play multiple positions. And, and that's what I think Jed, Jed does here for us. Yeah, I, I would just reiterate that. I think uh, you know if you look at, look at a lot of the teams that, uh, that have had recent success, they're very deep. And, and I think that's what it takes to, to win uh, at the major league level uh, at this point. Bruce in the middle. Bruce Beck, WNBC TV. Mm -hmm. Jed, you've missed only 14 games of the past two seasons after suffering a multitude of injuries earlier in your career. Do you sure. think you figured something out here? Do you feel like you're over the hump in, in terms of playing and being healthy? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I I feel great right now, and um, you know I, I've uh, uh, I've had a great routine the last couple uh, of off seasons, and um, you know all you, all you can do is prepare uh, every single day for the for the long season, and so um, just like you said, you you want to have a, a deep, or just like Brody said, you want to have a deep team to that that is versatile, uh, and uh, so you can cover all your bases. Good. Gentlemen, thank you again. Before we uh, break off, wanted to uh, have TVs come up on stage for one-on-one. -on -one. Writers here to my right. And uh, again, uh, we'll do the one-on-ones and uh, any other photo opportunities you need. Thank you again.